Uh, it's just we're looking at uh, colligative properties. Okay, so first of all, which of the following equal solution you expect to have lowest freezing point? So we are looking at the freezing point, freezing point, depression. So uh, when we create a, a solution, so the the freezing point, I will just call it FP, is going to decrease. It's uh, one of the properties of a solution. Okay, so we have 0 0.4 molality. It's not mo molarity, so it's a small, uh, small letter M, so molality, potassium sulfate. We have 0 0.4 sodium chloride, and we have 0 0.4 glucose, and also we have 0 0.04 potassium sulfate, and also 0 0.04 uh, sodium chloride. Okay, so uh, let's have a look on our um, uh, the provided solution. Okay, so the freezing point of water is the passed by addition of the solute. Yeah, this is the uh, for me the one of the consequence or one of the properties that when we have a solvent, this with a solute dissolved to become solution. So the freezing point will decrease, and the amount of the deep depression the freezing point depends on the molality of the solute particle in that solution. Higher the molarity, lower the freezing point. Okay, so I just drop in down very important point here, is that we have a higher Molality of the um, solute, then the freezing point will be further uh, decreased with a larger degree. With a larger degree. Okay, so uh, we are going to find out um, the actual amount of solutes in our solution. So first of all, for A, we have 0 0.4 molar K2SO4. So for each individual uh, ion, so for potassium, because it's K2SO4. So let me write on the right. So we have K2SO4. Assume that we have 0 0.4 molality of that. If you're only looking at a potassium ion, so for each, more, each uh, ionic, you can say for each ionic uh, carbon, each K2SO4, it will have two potassium. So therefore, the potassium will be equal to 0 0.4 uh, times 2, 0 0.8 molar, and then for sulfate ion will be equal to 0 0.4. So this is exactly what the collision is going on, on over here. And the total amount of particle or ion will be equal to 0 0.8 plus 0 0.4, 1.2. We're going to carry out the same collision for B, C, D, and E. Okay, so for B, we have 0 0.4 uh, sodium chloride, so we have 0 0.4 sodium, 0 0.4 chloride. The total number of molality of ion will be 0 0.8. And then for uh, glucose, we have 0.4, but we only have 0.4. All right, so um, I will go in details later, but let's go through the uh, solution together to see if any calculation error. So uh, we have 0.04 potassium sulfate, we have 0.08 potassium, and 0.04, so we have, have 0.12 molality. And then we have 0.04 sodium chloride, 0.04 sodium, and 0.04 chloride ion. And then the total will be 0 0.08 molality. So uh, from here, the correlation is correct. The correlation is correct. Okay. So however, when we're looking at D, uh, sorry, C, we are looking at C. So uh, we're looking at something called glucose. So glucose is an organic compound. It's an organic molecule. Uh, pretty much, is a is a sugar. So for this glucose. So assume we have this glucose, uh, it's water soluble, we are going to dissolve that in um, um, water to so create a solution. So we have C2H12O6, and then we have an aqueous solution. Okay, so for glucose molecule, um, what it's going to do when dissolve water is that, first of all, uh, we have a glucose uh, solid, it's a crystal. So this crystal is uh, con contain different uh, glucose molecule, so they just stack together to form a crystal. But when they dissolve in water, they go individual uh, glucose molecule going to surrounded by water, so they form a hydration shell. So they are going to be dissolved. When they dissolve in water, they still exist as a whole um, glucose molecule. It's still one intact one intact glucose molecule. Okay, so therefore. When we have 0 .0, 0 .4, uh, molality, uh, or say small capital M or glucose, w when we start, and then we're after dissolved, 
the total amount of particle or total amount of molecules to equals to zero point four um, uh, molality because it doesn't do any dissociation. Okay, uh, when we go back to look at our RNA compound, what we have to separate two ions together and then we then multiply them and then we add them together. The reason is that when we have our RNA compound going into water, it's going to be dissociate uh, to become potassium. So I'll go right here, potassium and also sulfate iron. So the whole um, solid is going to be dissociate, ionize, separate in two different components. So that's why when we are going to look at ionic compound in substance solution, we have to take in consideration the actual molarity of the particle will increase due to this dissociation. Due to this dissociation. Okay, so um, we already calculated the actual uh, number or concentration of uh, different solution, uh, the particle in different solution. The next step is we are going to find out which one had the highest and this should give the highest uh, amount of freezing point depression. So if you actually uh, look for the uh, freezing point depression the, uh, equation, delta F equals to uh, uh, constant. Uh, uh, this constant, I forgot the name, but I would call it the uh, freezing point depression constant. It depends on the solvent. And then we are going to take a negative with uh, the molality of our um, Total particle, total particle. Sometimes we, you will see an I over there. This is called the Van Hoff factor to account any dissociation uh, in the molecule. For, for instance, for this case, uh, when we have a 0 0.4 over here, and then we know that this ionic compound is going to dissociate in three different components. We have two potassium and one sulfate. So that's why we have to add a Van Hoff factor times three in order to find out the actual amount of the actual concentration of the um, particle in the solution. So that's why sometimes you can see the Van Hoff factor. But uh, if you know that for the molarity over here, you just plug in the total concentration, then you'll be fine. So from here, you can see that the change in the freezing point is directional, uh, directionally proportional to the concentration. So if you have a high concentration, we have a higher disparity depression. So again, obviously it is A. So A is, has the highest uh, molarity highest number of uh, um, particle, higher number of um, ions. So that's why the freezing point will further decrease uh, for a larger extent. So that's why we have lowest freezing point. All right, so uh, for this solution, uh, this, the solution is correct. I mean, the, uh, the answers is correct. Uh, and no problem with it.